So it has become a little bit of a tradition for me to sit down in front of the camera each year at the beginning of the year to talk about where the channel has been for the last year and where it's going for the next one. So since today, or at least when this video comes out, it's New Year's Day, I figured it was a good time to do this again. So we're going to talk about where the channel has been in 2023 and where it's going in 2024. But before we jump into any of that stuff, Happy New Year. Welcome to 2024. I hope 2023 was good to you guys and that it that 2024 is just as good or better than 2023 was. So happy new year. Hope you guys all have had a wonderful holiday season and are ready to jump into the new year with fresh feet and all that stuff. So that's what I have to say about all that. But now it's time to talk about 2023 in wrap up before we jump into some plans for 2024. So the year overall, 2023 was very good to the channel. Went up almost 20,000 subscribers views are way up all that stuff is just phenomenal and i'm so very very grateful to everyone who watches the channel whether you're brand new or you've been watching for a very long time thank you so very much for your patronage whether it's financially or just watching the channel and leaving likes and comments and all that stuff thank you so very much seriously if people weren't watching the content i'd stop making it that's just kind of the way it is i enjoy making the content but it'd be a lot less fun if i was just making it for myself you know, if I, if I and my mom and my dad and my family were the only ones watching my videos, I'd be pretty sad and probably not as ambitious as I am. So thank you so much for watching the channel. I do really appreciate it. I say that at the end of, channel, at the end of every video, but I just want to let you guys know, thank you so very much. So other than having the channel grow in a spectacular fashion, which just continues to blur, blow my mind, there were some struggles over the course of the years. The biggest one being that in March, I had COVID. And while I was thankful not to have COVID in the actual pandemic years, I was very lucky. My whole family was lucky, really. And obviously, not everyone was that lucky. So I'm grateful for that. We had COVID kind of at the tail end. And I was pretty much out of commission for about four weeks. And while I'm very grateful that I was able to recover from that, my whole family recovered from it. It did take quite a bit of time for the channel to recover from taking four weeks off. It turns out that YouTube doesn't like you to take time off from your channel. So it took about until mid-June, almost July, before I was back to pre-COVID levels in terms of growth and putting out content and all that stuff. It took a while. So I'm grateful that I was able to kind of overcome that and actually have the channel continue to grow. Because a lot of channels who, who their creators had COVID... And while they they recovered from COVID, their channel, some of them did not. And that's not just like small size creators like me, like me, but bigger creators as well. Just their their channels just completely died off because they got sick, and that's sad, right? So I'm very grateful that that didn't happen to me. Uh, one of the things that kind of came out of that is that I realized that I was making too much content. So I don't. You've probably noticed that I don't make as many videos as I used to. I still try to keep up a somewhat regular publishing schedule and while in the the past few months or so it hasn't been exactly you know today's monday you guys get a video usually i try to fit in two or three videos a week along with a podcast that's the way that i've been trying to do it and that's going to continue on forward but we'll talk more about that here in a few minutes i think overall it has been good though that i've been putting out a little bit less content because i've both been trying to make better videos but also it just makes me feel less like i'm doing this because i have to right sometimes before COVID and I was putting out a video basically every day, it felt like I had to sit down after I was done with my day job and open up Audacity, open up OBS, and then what am I making a com what, what, what am I making a video about? Uh, I had no plan oftentimes. Usually the thing I made a video on, it was something I made a decision to make a video on like five minutes before I made it. And you could tell <laughs> half the time there was no research. Well, the majority of the time there was no research and I was just hopping into a, a topic, you know, willy nilly. And either, you know, I had an overabundance of rants, which I do like to do the rant videos, but I don't want every video to turn into a rant video, I, or they were turning into a ramble. I do tend to ramble in all my videos, so that's probably never going to change, but they got kind of squashed in there, and I feel by making less content and actually deciding what I want to do before I want to do it well in advance, I can make better content overall, and that's something that I've been trying to do over the course of the last six months or so. Whether or not I've been successful, that's up to you guys to judge, but I think and feel like I've done a much better job of being mentally more prepared to make the videos, and because I make fewer videos, I don't feel that pressure to make a video every single night. If I, if I don't have a good idea for a video or I didn't make a good plan for a video, I just don't make a video. 
It's as simple as that. I then I can if it gets too late at night or whatever, and I haven't shot or you know opened up OBS yet, and even if I had a plan and I don't want to rush it, I can actually just say, well, I can push this to the next day. It's going to be fine. The channel's going to survive if I take a day off or if I don't get a video edited in time or shot in time. I can just push it to the next day and it's perfectly fine. Everything is, you know, the world's not going to end. You know, all you guys aren't going to hit the unsubscribe button just because I took a day off, which I'm very grateful for, obviously, but it's made my mental health much, much better over the course of the last six months. I feel much happier making content like this than I did when I was shoving out a video every single day. Brody Robertson does a video every single day. I have no clue how he does, has done it for so long. Seriously. Kudos for him. I'm glad that works for him, but it just, it didn't work for me. Other than that, 2023 was kind of the year I got away from the distros. And what I mean by that is that you guys, especially in the second half of the year, didn't see so many distros for me. You saw a lot of big time distros, so OpenSUSE and Fedora and Debian, but you didn't see little distros. Like I used to do those WTF videos, you know, on the random distro watch distro that I chose for the day. I got away from that a little bit because I got bored with those types of, you know, first look review things. I just don't care for those or those types of videos very much anymore. And I got away from it. And I have been trying to get back into those, to be honest with you, because they do make good content. A lot of people really like them, but I wanted to make them in a way that were interesting to me. And we'll talk again more about that later because I have finally figured out a way to make those interesting but over the course of the last six months you guys haven't seen much in terms of new distros for me i just don't haven't done that over the course of the last six months and in some ways i'm happy that i took a break from it because it has allowed me to kind of ponder over how i can make those better but also i was just kind of like there's only so many times you can take a look at a debian spin and think oh this is cool it's just debian with nothing special with a different name. I mean, half the time, that's what they are. I mean, if, if we're all being honest with each other and, you know, that can get boring not only for you guys, but it gets really boring for me because there's only so many ways you can package a Debian distro. There's only so many different ways you can package an Arch distro. And, you know, you look at enough of those and they just kind of all started bleeding together and like, what's this one really for? Why why did somebody waste their time on this? You know, it, it, it got to a certain point where I was doing those distros and I wasn't very nice to those developers because I was bored. It was more of a reflection on my disinterest in doing that type of video than it was on the distribution itself. And that just kind of led me to not want to do them anymore. You know, I, I didn't want bad mouthing developers is never a very good idea, especially when you don't have a really good reason to, to bad mouth them. Uh, when, when they have, when there's a good reason to badmouth them, I'll do that. But when it's just because I'm bored with doing those videos, it's not a good reason. So I stopped and I think that, over, you know, going forward, I found a good way of doing those videos so that I can stay interested in those and not, you know, become so burnt out on doing them over and over again. We'll talk about that here in a minute. The last thing that kind of happened in 2023 was the death of the short. Uh, now, YouTube asks you to do shorts all the time. They really do want you to do shorts and live streams and regular content. They want you to kind of mix everything together because it just helps with the algorithm and stuff like that. But I've never been very good at short things. <laughs> I like to ramble. And if you cut my rambling time down to a minute, I get really sad and angry and frustrated and i've never i've never been very good at it but coming up in the, the new year i'll be bringing back some shorts i'll probably try to do one a week if i can i'm not sure how, how long i'll be able to stick with that but probably what will happen and this will be the ultimate cheat is to take small clips from the podcast and make them into the shorts kind of like the linux tube does and several other uh linux youtubers and linux podcasters do if i can do that It'll save me time. I don't actually have to make shorts, uh, but also it'll mean that I can keep those things shorts, you know, actually short instead of me rambling on for ever and ever and ever. So that was kind of 2023. Uh, overall, a very, very good year for the channel. And I'm just so very grateful that the, the channel continues, you know, growing and I'm continuing to be happy with it. I'm just very, very grateful. I don't know other words to say it. So thank you guys for watching for that. So 2024 is here. It has been for a few hours now as of you guys watching this, for, probably for most people at least. I don't know what time I'll actually press the publish button, but I think for most people, 2024 is here. So what's coming up? Well, first off, we'll obviously want the channel to continue growing because that makes me happy. And, 
satisfies my need to become Mr. Beast. <laughs> That's not going to happen, man. That's not going to happen. Uh, just, I'm just joking. I have no interest in becoming Mr. Beast. I'll take his money, but I don't really need his, his fame. But anyways, that's beside the point. Uh, I have many, many plans over the course of the next year that I want to do. So first, publishing schedule. I actually want to have a publishing schedule again. I got away from that, and like I said earlier, where I can just, you know, if I don't want to do a video, I don't have to do a video. I want to still be able to do that part of it, but I want to have a more structured release schedule so you guys can kind of know when a Linux cast video is going to come out. So, you, and you're already on the schedule, whether you like it or not. <laughs> I'm going to be releasing videos. Let's see if I can remember that I, how I set this up. I, I'm doing it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So you get five videos a week. So Tuesday, or excuse me, Wednesday, Friday, and set Sunday will be regular videos. Saturday will be the live stream for the podcast. And Monday will be the day you'll get the podcast in edited form. So it'll be a day later than normal. We're doing that for editing purposes. Uh, but that's the schedule as we have it right now. And that's the direction I want to carry on through the entire year. Now, I reserve the right to edit that if something doesn't work for me. But as of right now, I think that that's going to be the best way to do it. And I'm going to keep my ability to not do a video when I don't want to by simply being ahead. That's going to be... Now, I've talked about getting ahead in every single one of these look forward videos that I've ever done. Every single one of them. This is like my fourth one. And I've never done it very well. <laughs> like, this is... I, I do it good for a while. And then I stop. Because getting ahead is hard and I'm a lazy bastard. It's, it's just not a God, honest to God truth of it. I I look at the fact, oh, look at that. I have a whole bunch of videos pre-recorded. I don't have to make a video. Woohoo! I can go play some, you know, uh, City Skylines or read a book or whatever. And woohoo! <laughs> and, and slowly and slowly, the cachet of videos that I have, you know, penned up for you guys disappears. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, shit. I don't have a video for tonight. What am I going to do? <laughs> That's happened to me more than once. So I'm hoping by, you know trying harder that I can have a large enough front-loaded recording you know apparatus thing whatever whereas I can you know if I want a day off I can because I have a video you know already recorded and ready to go but I don't take so many days off that my stash of videos goes away so I'm hoping to stay ahead right now I'm three or four videos ahead and I think that by staying ahead you know starting early and having an actual plan and a schedule and all that stuff is going to do me a lot of good going forward in order to keep that schedule but also to keep the mental health stuff I talked about earlier so that's the scheduling plan uh, just kind of to go off from that the podcast is going to be changing just a little bit it's going to be going back to just Tyler and I uh, as a as a podcast co-host duo, uh, Josh and Steve are, are stepping away from the podcast because we just frankly can't edit four audio streams at the same time. It just takes way, way too long to edit four, four audio and video streams at the same time. Uh, I do have audio, uh, editing help for the podcast now. Thank you, Nate. Uh, thank you so very, very much. But we have to make Nate's life a little bit better because it was taking 10 to 12 hours to edit the podcast, and that's just too much for a volunteer to have to do. So uh, we're going back to two-person stream. You guys will still see Josh and Steve around the channel every once in a while, I'm sure, or at least in the comment section. So just know that I haven't killed them off or anything. They're not dead. They're still around. They also both have their own YouTube channels, which I'll uh, link in various places. So they'll, they'll still be around. But it, the podcast itself is going to go back to just Tyler and I. Hopefully that will mean short, a little bit shorter podcasts. That means that we can stay under an hour, which will be nice also for editing purposes. But it will also allow us to bring things back like challenges where it's kind of hard to do a challenge for four people. It was much easier to do a challenge for two people. So things like that will also be able to make a return doing it this way. And we, we thank Josh and, and Steve for being part of the podcast for this last year. And uh, hopefully everyone is happy with the new format of the podcast coming back next week. It's coming back next week. It should be fun. So uh, that's happened to do with the podcast. We'll be recording again that every Saturday in a regular time slot, 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And then the edited version will come out Monday evenings. Okay, so if you want to have... Uh, if you want to watch the edited version or you want to listen to the edited version, you'll be able to do that on Mondays uh, going forward. That's just, that was just the way we give Nate plenty of time to edit 
the podcast, even with only two audio streams. That way he gets a little bit of extra time and it doesn't feel rushed and it can be a better job and all that stuff. So that's that's the way that's going to happen with the podcast. So that takes care of podcasting schedule and video schedule. Uh, in terms of actual content, I have some things that I would like to talk about. So I'm going, uh, I have a, a PinePhone Pro now. I've recorded one video about that so far. That should be coming up sometime this week. I believe it's going to be published on Wednesday, a Wednesday evening. And I'll be doing several videos on the Pine phone over the course of the year. So if you're interested in in Linux hardware and you are you want to hear me talk about that, you'll be in luck because I'm going to start talking about that just a little bit more. And we'll get into deep dives like how to actually flash a different operating system or a different distro onto the device. Because right now I have no clue how to do that and I want to learn. So that should be a fun video to make. Also, I talked about those distro review, distro first look things that... I didn't really care for, I have found a way to make those a little bit more interesting for me, and that is to actually use the distros, who knew? B before I would, you know, install it and then do an initial first look, sight unseen. And while, you know, that has its charm sometimes, it got boring after a while. So what I've decided to do is actually install, so I'll record the installation on hardware. I'm gonna do it actually on hardware. I got a laptop here, I got a capture card that actually works this time, and I've already shot one of these, so it's actually gonna work. I can record the install and then what I'll do is just stop the recording and then I'm going to use the actual distro for you know up to nine or ten hours or a couple days however long it needs to be just uh, more than 20 minutes is what we're looking for here I don't have an actual time I'm not going to do a, like a long term review so it's not going to be like a month long or whatever but you know a few hours or you know a day or two and then I'll come back to finish the recording and I'll be able to actually tell you how it runs on hardware how it games a little bit how it actually functions when actually using the damn thing Instead of me just saying, hey, you know, here's a new distro based on Debian. It has all of these applications installed. The end. Uh, that's not very useful to anyone, I don't think. And I've talked about that before on the channel. So I think that by actually using it for a couple days or a couple, few hours, even whatever, I can actually make a more informed video. And I think that'll make it more interesting, not only for you guys, but for me. So those will be coming back in the new year or in this new year. And uh, it should be interesting. I'm going to try to do one of those a month. I don't plan on overwhelming you guys with new distros. I don't really don't think I need to do that. So one a month or so, and that'll be that. The other distro related videos that I do are the long-term reviews. Now, I have been working on my NixOS long-term review since I think October, maybe November, but I think it was either late September or early October where I started using Nix. And I have Nix installed on this PC that's in front of me. It's on an extra hard drive. I have it installed on the standing desk, which you guys can no longer actually see. It is actually still back there. Just the camera is no longer, you know, in, in it's not no longer in frame. Uh, so it's been installed that and it's on the main uh, disk on that. So I've been using that as pr the primary operating system there. And on various laptops. I have it on a couple of different laptops that I use in different places in the house. So I've been using NixOS now for two or three months and I plan on using it for three more months after this. So I will be releasing that re review in um, March sometime. I'm not going to say what time in March. It'll be either we're going to aim for mid-March sometime before my birthday. We'll see how we how it goes there. I have no legitimate and you know firm plans for when, but it's going to be March-ish sometime. And uh, oh boy. Guys, that's going to be one hell of a review. I have many, 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 many thoughts on NixOS. So many thoughts. Uh, some of them positive. Some of them definitely positive. But I also have a lot of negative and weird things to say about it. Because it is a very weird distribution. Let's just put it that way. So if you're interested in that and you haven't already, and you've made it... 20 minutes into this long rambling video that I've made, make sure you hit the subscribe button because you don't want to miss that. Uh, I will also be doing two other long-term reviews this year. Uh, one of them is still a mystery to all of us. I don't haven't decided yet which I, way I want to go to. And the other one is either going to be MicroOS, which is OpenSUSE's immutable distro, or it will be Gen 2. <laughs> now, I have done a 30-day Gen 2 long-term long -term review before, but... I haven't done one that is as long as I do them now. So I will install Gen 2 on my main machine on the extra hard drive. I'll install Gen 2 on the computer behind me if that's the way that I decide to go. And that should be a, you know, a joy because I've used, obviously, Gen 2 before. I've used vanilla Gen 2. I've used Red Core before. 
and I think it'd be probably be good for me to take another look, long-term look at it, but we'll see how that goes. If that's the way I decide to go, or I'll go with the, the micro OS or Aeon or whatever it's called these days. If you have a choice on which where I go after NixOS, leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll take those into account. So uh, th those will happen. And then beyond that, there are a couple other places that I want to take, kind of take a focus on uh, for the new year. So I'm going to be covering more applications. So Linux-based and open source applications. I'm going to make more videos about those. I would like to bring back some kind of list video like I did before where I talked about like the top five Linux app for January 25. I'd like to do something like that again. I don't know. I'm not very good at keeping those going. You know, I tried to reboot them a couple months ago. It didn't work out because, you know, again, lazy bastard. <laughs> but, you know, I, I want to, I like to, I like doing those videos. So I'm going to try to bring something like that back. We'll see how that goes. Uh, so I'll be talking more about applications. I also want to do more window manager stuff. So I've, I've kind of gotten away from the window manager stuff, but there are new, they're not really new window managers, but there's window managers out there that I haven't made a lot of videos on. So things like Herbst Love WM, I want to make some more stuff about DWM. I haven't made new, good new DWM content in a very long time. Uh, I want to talk about Sway and Hyperland and some of the Wayland compositors that are, that are out there, DWL, like that. And I want to talk about things that I haven't, talked about since I started the channel. Things like Spectre WM and uh, uh, Le Left WM. I'd like to try both of those again, which I haven't tried in ages. So there'll be more window manager content coming up so sometime this month and going forward into the year because I'm really excited about trying some different window managers. I've been in Xmonad for a very long time and ha I've been in, in <laughs> I've been in Xmonad for so for so long. I think I have Stockholm syndrome because I'm starting to actually understand Haskell a little bit and that is just the scariest thing ever because I don't like Haskell. I I didn't before I started using it and now I I can't say that I like it, but I like it more than I did and that Definitely Stockholm Syndrome. Definitely. Help me. Rescue me. I, I need different window managers. Qtile, please stop crashing for the love of God. All right, so that that's another place that I want to focus on. And the last one that I want to talk about is just kind of getting, getting into more how-to stuff. Now, how-tos don't traditionally do well because they don't apply to everybody. But I want to get into some doing some more some more of those again to kind of get into in depth of how using Linux in different ways and how to do different things on Linux. I think that that can be fun. I enjoy making those videos, so I'm going to do do those again. And I suppose that was I did and finally before that one. But I also like to do some rising videos. I know I'm not supposed to call it rising theming videos, whatever. Um, I'd like to do some more of those. I enjoy the time lapses and the speed runs of, of theming my desktop environment or my window managers. I like doing those. I know they're not the most popular amongst you guys, but I like doing them. So I'm going to do a few of them. I won't overload the content schedule with them. I promise, but I'll be doing some, maybe one a month or so, maybe one every other month, whatever. And, uh, and that's another thing that I'd like to do. So that's all coming up in 2024. I think I have some really good stuff planned. I have some good stuff on my list of videos that I already want to make. So I have a good focus on what I want to do for the new year. So uh, that was a really long and rambly videos, but these are always long videos because I kind of just sit down and I have a chat with you guys. Probably could just do a, maybe next year I'll just do this in a live stream. What do you guys think of that? Leave a comment in the comment section below if you'd like to see that. Uh, <laughs> hashtag YouTuber. Anyways, that's it for this for this one. Thank you guys again so very much for watching my channel over the course of the last three years. I can't believe I'm well into my third year of doing this and that I have over 40,000 subscribers. That's just, when I started this channel, guys, I didn't expect to have anybody watch, and I was just using this as a backup platform for the podcast so that I didn't have to host it all, every episode on AWS. <laughs> that's, that's all this was. And then I made a first video. It was a ZimWiki video. You guys want to see something highly entertaining? Go watch my ZimWiki video. It's the very first real video that I ever published. Uh, I had some podcasts before that, but man, that thing is horrendous. And the funny thing is, is that my videos remained horrendous for months after that. They didn't improve whatsoever. They didn't, like even once I started appearing on camera, I didn't really do any editing. <laughs> I didn't do any editing, and you can tell. I like I was using ums and ahs and you knows all over the place. So it's been I have gotten a little bit better, but I still ramble like a a drunk sailor. Or drunk or something. Anyways, that's it for this one. If you want to do any supporting of the podcast or the channel, whatever, 
The best way to do so, and the freest way to do so, is leave a thumbs up on the video that you're watching. It really does help. So do that, and I appreciate it. Uh, thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Uh, thanks for all your support throughout this year and last year and the year before. So thank you so very much for that. I truly do appreciate it, and I should actually switch to the end screen credits now so you can actually see all the people who do support me on patreon and youtube you can co and kofi and all the places you can support me monetarily so thank you so very much for that if you want to check out merch shop that the linuxcast.org uh, you find uh t-shirts and hats and hoodies and all that stuff all that goes directly to help the channel so if that's a, a way you want to support me you can or patreon.com slash linuxcast thanks everybody for watching again have a happy 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 new year and i'll see you next time